This story happened back when I was 22 years old. For context, that was over 10 years ago, and at the time I was still trying to figure out life. I did the whole school thing for a while, but it wasn't for me. While I was in school, I met a friend whose family owned this construction and contracting company. They did everything from manufacturing buildings to plowing driveways in the winter. He and I became closer one semester and I started working with him and his family at the company. Within a couple of months, I made more money than I made the entire previous year at my last job. The work was hard, but it was rewarding and it paid well. That summer, I stayed in the town where my school was so I could work with my friend and his family. When the fall semester was getting ready to start, I made the choice to drop out and just work for his company. That first year, I did all the work I could and made enough money to survive by myself. One day, a job offer came up that was going to pay very well, but the job was going to basically be a 72-hour straight job. We were going to build a bridge in a small town that was about an hour away from where the company was located. The work was tough, obviously, but we eventually got it done, and it was up to code. I was excited to get paid because with this money I was planning on putting a down payment on a new house. Immediately after the job, one of my co-workers suggested that we go out for some beers to celebrate a job well done. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't just go home and just pass out on the couch. The simple answer was that by this point I was overtired and the thought of celebrating the completion of this big job with my friends was very appealing to me. While we were sitting at the bar, I noticed a woman on the far side of the bar. She kept eyeing my direction. Maybe I was just feeling confident since we got the job done and I knew that I was going to have some extra money, but more realistically, it was probably because I had one too many drinks. I decided to make my move and I was pleasantly surprised to see that she seemed to be interested. We started with some small talk and very quickly that evolved into some heavy conversation. I'm not going into a ton of details here, but let's just say that I was feeling lucky. At this point, after talking to her for a little while, I had this feeling that she was going to head back to my place. While we were sitting there, I noticed that she kept looking up and the smile soon turned into a frown. I tried to ignore it at first, but it was becoming too obvious. I finally asked her what was going on and she decided to inform me that the man sitting across from us at the bar was her ex and he was a very jealous man. I told her we could move and she was smitten by that idea. My group of friends was still there and we all moved to a table near the rear of the bar. Her ex was nowhere in sight and we soon forgot about all that unpleasantness. However, that only lasted maybe 10 more minutes. I noticed the frown on her face and I thought the ex may have been back. And before I could ask what was going on, she pointed to a different guy sitting at a table not far from us and said the same thing as before. Ex-boyfriend. Very jealous man. I'm not going to lie. I started having second thoughts about this woman around this time. I even thought that maybe she was messing with me. Who knows, maybe this girl was wild. She has all these exes looking at her at the same location. Now, don't misunderstand me. I have no issues with dating and meeting new people. My issue was with how these men were looking at her. Something just felt incredibly wrong. Those ideas of doubt don't swirl around too long in my head because she suggested that we just get out of there and maybe have a few more drinks at my place. I jumped on the chance and took her up on this offer. We got to my place a little after one in the morning. I was exhausted mentally, but the adrenaline and excitement from meeting this woman was keeping me going. I put on some music and grabbed us both a drink. She was acting weird, but still sort of flirty. I was trying to put on my moves, which I admit are not the greatest, and she was being a little dismissive and kept checking her phone. I didn't ask what she was doing on her phone because obviously that wasn't my business, and a few minutes later there was a knock at the door. It scared me half to death. Remember, it's after one in the morning, I haven't slept at all, so hearing a knock at the door is a little strange. I knew the music wasn't that loud, so I had no idea why someone would be knocking at the door at this hour. I was weighing my options silently in my head, and that's when my nice date got up and said in this sort of annoyed voice, Ugh, I guess I'll get it. I jumped up and asked her what she was doing, and in a very arrogant tone she says, What does it look like? I'm answering the door. I instantly felt sick to my stomach as I watched the man from the far side of the bar walk into the place like he owned it. Before I could even react, 
The other man from the bar was only a few steps behind him. The man in front whispered in a loud and aggressive voice, saying, If you make a sound, your night's going to get a whole lot worse. He had some sort of weapon concealed in his waistband because, as he said that, he lifted his sweatshirt and showed me the handle of something. The other man then pulled out a knife and demanded that I give him my wallet and any other valuables. I of course complied, but thankfully for me, this was just a small studio apartment. I don't have much of anything, and since I'm trying to buy a house, I didn't really have any belongings in this place, as I'm a pretty minimalistic person. The man with the knife stood in front of me as I stood there with my hands up. The other man and my date, who I had realized during all of this was part of this little setup game, decided to search my apartment for anything else they wanted to take. A few minutes passed and they ran out of my apartment with basically only my wallet, which had a $20 bill I think, and my debit card which didn't really have much in my account. I waited a few minutes to call the police which I knew was stupid but I was scared that they might be still lingering outside my apartment. When the police arrived, it occurred to me that I never even got this woman's number. I only had a description of her and the two men that she was with, and maybe mentioning that they could possibly check the cameras at the bar that we were at that night. And later on they must have decided against using my card because I assumed they could figure out that it was tracked. I did eventually cancel that card, but I waited a few days to maybe see if they left a paper trail or something. After I filed the report, I was sure that they would catch them, but they never did. I never saw that woman or those two guys at the bar or anywhere else, and the bar staff there didn't recognize them when I brought it up. All in all, I guess I'm kind of lucky. I didn't get hurt, and I only really lost 20 bucks. But that doesn't change the fact that this is still just a terrifying memory of my life, and I'm just so thankful that nothing more serious happened. Be careful meeting people out there. She seemed like a great person, or maybe I was just too tired to see through all the red flags that were right in front of my face. So this story is pretty crazy, and honestly, every time I think about it or I'm reminded of it, I still shiver a little bit. It has to be at least five years ago now. I went out with a bunch of friends to a comedy show. I love stand-up comedy and going to see a comic perform is one of my all-time favorite things to do. The show was at this massive resort and spa place near where I lived. Down the road were a few casinos, so I think the place was designed to be a place for patrons of the casino to stay at. The resort had an awesome bar and a bunch of suites, and there were six of us in our group, all of us couples. The night out was planned months in advance. We'd see the show go to the bar for some drinks, and then we all get separate suites for the night. It was kind of a romantic getaway, but also a friendship getaway as well. The rooms were awesome. They had hot tubs in the room, and I was just looking forward to soaking in that after the show. And the show was awesome though, and we all hit the bar right after. It was probably around 10 or 11 when we were actually sitting in the bar. I think it's worth noting that you don't need to be staying at the resort to visit the bar. It's open to the public and I think it's one of the more popular bars in the area. While we were sitting together enjoying each other's company, we got approached by a strange looking fellow. He was a tall man with some pretty nasty teeth, I remember. He was also uncomfortably skinny. And with some weird confidence he asked us about how we liked the show. Nobody answered right away, I think it was solely because of this man's sketchy appearance. I tried not to judge him so I answered and told him that the show was awesome. He started talking about the show and I have to say that he knew what he was talking about. He mentioned certain bits from it and kept mentioning how we all look like pretty big fans. I could tell my friends were pretty annoyed but I just continued engaging with this man. After a little bit of back and forth the guy asked if we'd actually like to meet him, the comedian that is. We all looked at each other in disbelief and asked if he was serious. He said that he could only take two of us but it'd be worth it. My friends didn't trust the situation so they passed which meant that me and my girlfriend were going to be the two that get to meet him. Now I know how sketchy this sounds especially coming from this guy but at the moment it really didn't give off any sort of red flags or anything like that. Like I said in the moment he really did seem like he knew what he was talking about and he spoke with a lot of confidence. The man said that the comedian had some press stuff to take care of but 
he could sneak us into the back where he was staying after midnight. But this gave us a little pause. He was staying in the back? It just didn't make a lot of sense. And the man went on to explain that the resort had some special suite in the back that was meant for the entertainers, whether it was comedians, bands, or even plays. It seemed legit, and it seemed like he knew what he was talking about. A few minutes to midnight, my friends went back to their rooms, and me and my girlfriend made our way back to the back room where this man said to meet him. We had a bad feeling almost right away. There were no trespassing signs everywhere, and it just had that feeling of, we're not supposed to be here. We kept telling ourselves that we belonged here and that we were invited, but it still didn't help that bad feeling. A few minutes after midnight, and we were getting ready to bail, and we heard a commotion coming from down the dark and narrow alleyway. As we adjusted our eyes to the dim lighting, we saw the tall, sketchy man from before running at us at full pelt. The man sees us, doesn't say a word, and just runs right past us and leaves the back room. Seconds later, two very large security guards turn the corner and yell, freeze. Both my girlfriend and I look behind us, expecting to see the man or anyone else, but to our horror, it was just us. We look back at security and we could now see that they were running directly at us, seemingly ready to attack. But before we even knew what was happening, I was taken to the ground. Three more guards approached, and we both got apprehended and taken to the small room at the back of the resort. We explained the situation to them and told them dozens of times that we didn't know that man, and he told us that we could meet the comedian if we met him back there. This back and forth went on for a while, but they eventually released us. We were detained in that back room for quite a while, and I don't even know if any of that was honestly legal, but it did happen. We finally found out that this guy had some strange stalker obsession with the comedian, I guess. I think they did arrest him, but I actually don't know for sure if they caught him or not. And for the record, there is no special suite in the back of the resort for the entertainers. It was all a lie, just like everything else this strange man told us. But what makes this story so unsettling is not that this guy was creepy, it's that we have no idea what his intentions truly were for us. Why did he invite us back there with him? Did he plan on framing us for some horrible act that he was about to commit? Or is it possible that this guy really thought that he was friends with a comedian? We never got answers and unfortunately endured a night of very uncomfortable detainment. I wish I could tell you more, but I've really told you everything I know. And I just hope wherever this creep is, it's far away from me. I hate going out, and I'm thankful I'm married now and my husband hates going out as well. I never really enjoyed it either. I know a lot of people, especially as they get older, they slow down. That's mainly because they get it out of their system when they're young. My friends started going out every weekend back in high school and I was always looking for ways to get out of it. One weekend during my senior year of high school I was talked into going out to this house party at a friend Wanda's house. I tried every excuse in the book but she practically begged me to go and I caved. I remember being so anxious leading up to the party. Everyone from school was going apparently and all week long I just remember people talking about the rager of a party going down at Wanda's. I got there early so I could find a nice corner of the house to just post up in. It took a little while but I finally started to unwind as the party went on. I was drinking a little bit and I'm sure that was part of the equation of me loosening up. The party started around 7 that night so by the time midnight rolled around people were already leaving. I remember thinking to myself, maybe going out isn't so bad. I didn't want to drive home, at least not right away since I had been drinking. I stayed with Wanda and helped her clean the place up a little bit. She lived alone with just her dad and she didn't want him to come home from his business trip to a destroyed house. There was five of us left at the house at around one in the morning and the house was almost spotless since we all divided and conquered different rooms for cleaning. The other three girls were going to stay overnight and I was going to leave around two since I wasn't feeling the alcohol at this point. I went into the bathroom to wash my face and take care of my bladder before the drive home. I really just wanted to make sure that I was okay enough to drive. While I was in the bathroom, I heard a loud crash, followed by these gasps and screams of friends. After all the OMGs from my friends, I heard Wanda yell, 
you can't be here anymore. And that was instantly responded by some aggressive woman yelling, shut up. I didn't know what to do. I started to hear crying and more panicking coming from my friends. I felt like a coward, but I locked myself in the bathroom. I heard Wanda yell to my friends who were out in the room, let's get out of here, and I started to hear more loud bangs happening, and I just sat in this sort of fetal position in the bathroom floor. I wish I could call someone, but my cell phone was in my bag, which was in the kitchen, and I started to hear that aggressive voice again yelling, you're not leaving. I could hear the sounds of shoving and screaming, and it was like witnessing a nightmare, but not being able to see what was happening. I couldn't imagine what my friends were going through on the other side of that door, and I just sat there in the bathroom like a coward. The continued crying and screaming of my friends accompanied by the loud bangs and glass shattering was enough for me to be paralyzed in fear. And a few moments passed and I heard Wanda yell, Okay, go now. And then I heard a series of footsteps running by the door, and I was too scared to act. This aggressive woman ran by the door, assumedly chasing my friends and screaming, Get back here. She then started to scream and it was the most unsettling thing I'd ever heard in my entire life. I had no idea what was going on, and just when I thought this nightmare couldn't get any worse, the woman approached the bathroom door and tried opening it, but realized it was locked. She started pounding on the door, screaming, who's in my bathroom? I just started crying and just remained on the bathroom floor. The woman was relentlessly pounding on the door, and I was convinced that the door was going to break at any second, although I don't think that was actually possible. And this went on for a few agonizing minutes. I just hoped that it would end soon. Then I, not even joking, the woman started to run back and forth outside the bathroom door. I don't know if she was on something or just some crazy insane woman with the zoomies, but her footsteps were fast and heavy. It sounded like some bear outside the bathroom stomping around. I couldn't figure out what was happening. Clearly this woman thought that the house was hers and she knew Wanda's name. I was trying to put puzzle pieces together in my mind, but due to the frantic nature of the woman, I was a little distracted to say the least. It wasn't long after my friends ran away that I heard the sound that I found strangely comforting. It was the sound of the police coming into the home and apprehending the woman. She was screaming, and I could hear a fight being put up. One of the officers knocked on the bathroom door and asked if I was okay, and it took me a second to answer, but I finally was able to shake the words out of my mouth. I unlocked the door and slowly came out, and it was like seeing your nightmare finally coming into reality. I saw the wreckage of their beautiful home. Glass was everywhere. In the kitchen, I saw the woman handcuffed standing with two officers, and she looked at me, and I'll never forget what I saw. She had the most deranged eyes I'd ever seen in my life. They were big, nearly bulging out of her face. She was breathing heavily, and when she noticed me leaving the bathroom, she just started to howl again and scream that I was trespassing in her home. As one of the officers started to escort me out of the house, I noticed her hands were all red with what I assumed may have been blood. Then, I noticed outside the bathroom door had red handprints all up and down the door where she had been banging. This woman was destroying her body, and it was traumatizing. When I got outside... I saw Wanda and all of my friends, and I'd never been so happy in my life. I remember being locked in the bathroom and thinking to myself that they may have abandoned me, but they actually went and got help to save me. When I got my phone, I had dozens of texts and missed calls from Wanda telling me to stay locked up and not leave the bathroom. She thought I had my phone, even though I didn't, and it turns out, the crazy woman was Wanda's ex-stepmother, I guess if that's a thing. When she was married to her dad, she ended up going nuts and trying to hurt her father, which was ultimately what led them to separating, but she never quite accepted it, clearly. We never really found out what happened to her after that night. We realized quickly that Wanda didn't want to talk about it, and we never pushed it, and then eventually everyone just sort of moved on. So I have my reasons as to why I don't like going out, and this right here was top of the list. At the beginning of this past summer, I had an experience that was about as far opposite of a good night out as you can possibly have. 
Me and my four friends met at my apartment after work that night. We all got ready at my place since I have two bathrooms in the apartment. I had a new dress and I was feeling pretty confident. I was able to wear these cute blue heels that I bought at a thrift store two years ago that I never found a good outfit to match with. We spent about an hour getting ready and were about to leave and head to this party. My friend Megan's boyfriend was having this big party at this barn. I know that sounds like the setup for a bad horror movie, but we've done this before many times. His name is Charlie and he goes all out, gets a DJ, a dance floor, and even lets people crash at his house. The only thing that sucks is that the drive is about 45 minutes from my apartment, so we wouldn't get there until a little after 10.30. The barn is exactly where you may think it is, the middle of nowhere, but that's part of what makes the party so great is that we can be as loud as we want and we're not disturbing anyone. So why am I writing this, you might ask? Why was this night out so particularly bad? Well, in short, because we never made it to the party. Megan and one of my friends drove separately. I drove with my friend Ashley so we could stop and grab some beer first and then drive out there. Megan was getting antsy from being so late, so that's why we just said we'd meet them there. We grabbed our beer and started our drive to the party. About halfway through the drive, you get off the highway and the rest of the trip is just long, desolate roads. It's kind of creepy at night because it's just pure darkness for like 20 minutes until you reach Charlie's place. While we were driving the dark roads, we nearly went off the road because out of nowhere, this random person came out of the darkness and into the middle of the road, waving this bright flashlight around. We both screamed just out of the randomness of the situation. We pulled over, which was mistake number one. Ashley said that she needed to catch her breath. I was pushing her to hurry up because I could see the person with the flashlight approaching the car. Ashley didn't seem to care about the person though. She was still trying to get her composure from almost driving off the road. And just as she was getting ready to drive away, this figure was approaching the side of the vehicle on her side. He was walking strangely close to the car, but I didn't think too much about it at the time. She cracked her window and started to talk to this young man, which was probably her second mistake. He told us that he was coming from the party and that he had lost his phone. He said while he was driving he got a flat tire and his car drove off the road. Ashley was trying to be sympathetic, even though I just kept telling her to drive away. Then, in a calm and reassuring voice, this guy says, Listen, I know I'm a stranger on the side of the road, I'm not asking for a ride or anything, I just want to use your phone so I can call for a ride. I mean, I just came from the party. I assume you guys are heading to. We're all friends. I didn't like it, though. But Ashley has a weakness. She's just too nice. And instead of just asking him what the number was, she literally handed him the phone through the crack in the window. He took a few steps from the car and appeared like he was trying to make a call. I was freaking out, but he just kept telling me that it'd be okay. A few moments later... He came back over to the window and dropped the phone back into the window crack. He thanked Ashley for her kindness, and I started to think that this guy might have been right after all. Then he asked if we could help him get his bag out of his car. Ashley seemed confused and asked him why. He went on to explain to us by saying that his car went off the road and it was tangled in some thick brush on the side of the road, and to get his bag out, one of us would have to hold his arm. It didn't make sense to me in the moment, but this guy didn't give us any reason not to trust him to that point. Ashley thought about it for a second, but then unlocked the door. I grabbed her arm and asked what she was doing, and she just shushed me and opened the door. The man kept saying thank you like every two seconds. I didn't want Ashley to do this alone, so I got out of the car as well. And there we are, two girls in heels and a dress, helping some random guy in the middle of nowhere. This is literally how every stupid character dies in horror movies. We got to the side of the road and he said, It's just down there. We both looked at each other and then asked him if he was going to shine the light in that direction and he didn't say anything. We turned around and he was looking around frantically like he was waiting for something. I hit Ashley's arm and motioned my head out to our car. This was my way of saying that we needed to leave right now and I think Ashley agreed with me. Without saying anything, we turned around and ran back to our car. The man followed us and said, Wait, sorry, I, I didn't mean to freak you out. Please, I, I need your help. 
As we were getting into the car, we noticed that the tires on the driver's side were completely flat. We didn't run anything over, so we had no idea what had happened. She tried driving, but it was rim on the road, so we didn't get very far. I called our friend Megan, and Ashley called the police. Megan didn't answer, and I texted Megan and told her what was happening and to send help right away. Ashley told the police what was happening, and they said that they would get someone there as soon as possible. Not two minutes later, two bright lights appeared from off the road, and a big truck parked in front of us. Now, the man with the light was standing right outside Ashley's window, and he was banging on the glass. We knew we'd never make it until the cops came, and the next ten minutes were the worst of my entire life. The man with the light was banging on the windows and showing us a pocket knife, now with this horrible smile on his face. It became clear to us that someone with this man most likely slashed the tires of Ashley's car when we left to assist this dude. There was also another person in that big truck that we still haven't seen yet. Then, two huge trucks sped down the street. The man with the light jumped into the truck blocking our path and they sped away in the opposite direction. The two trucks were Charlie and a bunch of their friends. Megan got our text and told everyone at the party that we were in trouble and they came right away to try and save us. In the heat of the moment, nobody thought to chase the big truck because everyone wanted to make sure that we were alright. It was nearly ten minutes after that when the police showed up and it was only one squad car. We told them everything, and they seemed a bit dismissive and were more concerned with the alcohol in our car even though we hadn't even had one to drink yet. It makes me so mad that this man is most likely still out there causing harm. And who knows what happened to his accomplice that was also most likely in the woods. I hate to say it, but sometimes being kind can get you seriously hurt. We're lucky to leave with no physical scars, but not everyone is as lucky as we were. I remember going out with my family a few years ago when we were out on a family vacation, and one of the worst things that's ever happened to me happened. I think sometimes we have a tendency to think that when we're with our family, we're safe, but that isn't always the case. This specific year we went to West Palm Beach in Florida. It was beautiful. It doesn't have the fame and glamour of a place like Miami, but it's still amazing. It's like the light version of Miami, I'd say. We spent the first few days doing nothing except going to the beach and going out to eat, which, for money, is the best way to spend a vacation. But I can understand how people can get bored. On the fourth day, my sister suggested that we all go out and party since this was the first family vacation that we had gone on where my sister and I were old enough to drink. My parents were hesitant, but then came around and started to like the idea. My sister has a way of getting you excited to do things that you may not want to do. Yeah, she's a monster, but not the monster of this story. That afternoon, while we were at the beach, my mom asked if we had any kind of game plan for going out or if we were just going to wing it. I was curious too because I was forced into this because I'm part of the family and I didn't want to be a party pooper. And that's when my sister said that we were going to meet Nate at 9 o'clock outside the front of our hotel. This concerned me and my parents, as who the heck is Nate? We were all thinking the same thing, and I hate to say that about my sister, but she has a horrible habit of meeting terrible random people who seemingly take advantage of her. So we started to grill her about the Nate character that we were supposed to meet and wanted to know why we needed him to go out for the night. She said that she had met Nate at our hotel and they hit it off. I guess she was telling Nate that she was a little bored and wished that they could do more on their trip before heading home. Nate, who claimed to work at the hotel, said that he would take her and her family to a special spot that tourists never get to see. She told us that the situation reminded her of the movie Dirty Dancing, where all the employees secretly party at this fancy resort, and surprise, surprise, Dirty Dancing is one of my sister's favorite movies. My parents were a little skeptical, but like I said, my sister is persuasive, and she convinced my parents that there was nothing to be skeptical about. We had dinner together at a restaurant near a hotel and then walked back to the hotel to meet this Nate. It was nine on the dot and a large bald man came out from the alley and asked for my sister, 
who spoke up right away and said, Yes, can I help you? The man claimed to be a friend of Nate and said that he was here to transport us to where we needed to go. My sister started to follow the man with my mom, but my dad and I stayed back. My sister asked what was the issue, and I said, Am I the only one who thinks it's a bad idea to walk down a dark alley with a stranger we don't know? My sister started to yell at me, saying that I was embarrassing her, but I didn't care. I knew that there was something wrong here. My mom convinced my dad, and I went almost out of peer pressure at this point. The big man wasn't saying anything and was sort of just keeping to himself. In the back alley was this ugly tan van. The man opened the side door and with no bedside manner just says, get in. We all looked at each other. I could tell that my parents were not okay with this, but they were trying to go with the flow, and since my sister was all for this, they seemed to think that it was all right. They all jumped into the van and again, I followed just because. The man slammed the door behind us and got into the driver's seat. My heart was racing and I was just praying that this van would show up at some bar or something and that we could just Uber back to the hotel. I was trying to talk to the man, asking questions like, where's Nate, where are we going? But the man didn't really answer. When asked about Nate, he just said, I don't know, we'll see him soon, I think. And when asked about where we were going, he just shrugged and said, where I was told to take you. I could finally see my sister starting to get nervous. She was trying to get the big guy to talk about Nate since he was the reason we were sucked into this whole adventure, but the big man wasn't giving up any information. It was about a ten minute drive and the van pulled over to some warehouse. It was pitch black and we didn't recognize anything around us. It was a rundown industrial looking area. This big guy opened the door and barked at us to get out of the van. We listened but continued to ask what was going on and now the big man kept telling us to shut up. Here we were, in our vacation outfits at this abandoned industrial area with a large man making hostile remarks. The big guy told us to move toward the warehouse and we complied basically out of fear. My sister and mom started to cry and the guy just kept telling us to shut up. The man started to get into our faces yelling, phones in the bag, phones in the bag. He pulled out a white pillowcase and we all dropped our phones into the pillowcase. We continued to move forward and when we got inside, my sister yelled out, Nate. And a fairly handsome man, tan with blonde hair and blue eyes, ran over and told her to shut up. He then told us that if we made a move, we would regret it. This night had gone from bad to worse to very, very bad in just a matter of minutes. He told us to wait here and to not make a sound, which we all did. I just remember trying so hard not to freak out. The big man and Nate were about 10 to 15 feet away from us and they were talking to each other. The big guy had this bag of phones in his hands and Nate was talking on his cell phone. He looked frustrated and angry and he kept yelling the word no over and over again. And then both of them left the area of the warehouse where we were basically being held hostage. We heard the loud echoes of doors slamming and weren't sure if they had left or maybe even let somebody in. We waited for about 10 minutes and then noticed that they weren't coming back. My dad led us quietly to the door we came in and we noticed that the van was gone. We got outside, making a run for it. The area was horrible and even though this big guy and Nate weren't around, we expected to be jumped at any second. We finally came across a gas station and went inside and told the woman everything. She called the police for us, who came fast and we reported the incident. These men didn't work at the hotel. They didn't even have one employee there named Nate. Whoever these two were, their intentions were completely unknown. Something spooked them because they left without finishing whatever it was they were starting. They did find our phones, but not until days later. They found the pillowcase in a dumpster with the phone smashed inside. And honestly, I'm not sure if they ever caught these two. We went back home after that night, and we haven't returned to West Palm Beach since... And needless to say, we never take our sister's advice anymore. This story took place approximately five years ago. One of my friends was getting married in the late summer. She was getting married at a local casino and if we called in with a bride or groom's name, 
we were able to rent out a room at the casino for a discounted rate. I knew that the availability would probably go quickly, so I decided to book a room straight away, knowing that I wouldn't want to drive home after the wedding. The casino was about 15 minutes away from my house, so I figured I could also check into the room early at around 3pm, get ready and then just walk to the wedding. The wedding was one of the best I had ever been to. The venue was amazing and had indoor and outdoor access. It was a gorgeous day and the food was the best I've ever had at any wedding before or since. After the wedding, a lot of people went their separate ways. Some people went home, some people went directly to the casino to gamble, and some hit up the numerous bars on the property. I decided to go gamble with a few friends. We went to the roulette table where I think I asked for $50 to $75 in colored chips. We all were picking our favorite numbers but weren't having any luck. I decided with my last 20 chips I would put them all on 22 black. A few of my friends joined me and we actually hit the number. I can remember all of us jumping up and down and cheering and then trying to regain our composure feeling a little embarrassed. As soon as we got our chips we put them in our pockets until we could cash out. As soon as we left the table I was stopped by a short man dressed in sweatpants and a hoodie wearing sunglasses and doors. He stepped in front of me and said, Hey I was really impressed with your play. I got a suite upstairs and I'd love to have you and your friends up for some drinks. I responded by saying something along the lines of, Oh, we're all set, man. And he smiled, responding, Well, I'll be around if you change your mind. I walked to the side and caught back up with my friends. A few people wanted to take their winnings to the slot machines, but since I had won a good deal of money, I was done gambling for the night. However, I decided to stay with my friends even though I wasn't gambling. As we looked for open slot machines, I noticed that the guy who had approached me at the table wasn't far away. He was sitting at slot machines adjacent to my friends and me. I didn't make it obvious that I was looking, but every time we went to a different section of the casino, I kept an eye open to see if he was following us. He was keeping his distance, but I continued to see him each time we moved around. I let my friends know and they suggested that we give up on the casino and meet up with some of the others from the wedding who were drinking at one of the bars at the casino. We went and had a good time for about an hour or so but could start seeing people fading. Everyone was getting tired and leaving to go back to their rooms. I asked my friend Michael if he would walk back with me to my room as we were staying on the same floor. I'm glad I did because as we left the bar I saw the same guy from before and he approached me and said, have you considered that drink? Michael stepped in and just said, Hey listen, back off, she's taken, putting his arm around me. I thanked him for doing that and hoped that his pretending to be my boyfriend would be the end of the story. However, my night didn't end there. Michael dropped me off in my room and made sure that I got in okay. I took a shower and set out some clothes to get into before bed and also started packing everything I had out from earlier in the night. My plan was to wake up early and check out and head home. After my shower, I dried off and put on a towel. I thought I could hear something, but it wasn't very loud, so I assumed it was doors shutting in the hallway. But I continued to think that I heard something. I stayed silent and held my breath as I moved toward the door. As I got right near the door, the handle started jiggling. I jumped back without making a sound and turned the light on in the hotel room. I went and pressed my eye near the peephole and saw someone pacing outside the room. I couldn't quite make out who it was, but my gut was telling me that it was probably the creep from earlier. I made sure all the locks were fastened on the door, especially the one that wouldn't let the door open all the way even if it was open slightly. I got into bed, turned the TV on at a very low sound and tried to see if I could close my eyes, but I couldn't get comfortable. The thought of someone jiggling my door handle wouldn't allow me to relax my mind enough to try and sleep. I was watching cartoons at maybe 2 or 3 a.m. at this point and I felt myself slowly starting to doze. My eyes were getting heavier and heavier and then I sat up and heard, bang. There was a pounding at my door. My heart was racing. I still remember feeling like it was going to beat out of my chest. A second set of pounding and then I heard someone from the hallway yelling, what are you doing, it's the middle of the night. I heard footsteps trailing off down the hall, and I sat in bed for about 15 minutes before I got the courage to approach the door. When I did, 
No one was outside of it, and I went back to bed. I stayed awake for probably another two or so hours and then waited until I heard a door open and close in the hallway and heard what sounded like children's voices. I grabbed my stuff and left the room and took the elevator with what seemed to be a dad and two kids heading down to the pool. I checked out, speed walked to my car and bolted out of there as fast as I could. I still remember this night like it was yesterday and sometimes I still have nightmares that I'm in my room and someone is knocking on the door. Now, anytime I travel or stay in hotels, I bring my boyfriend with me. It's given me a sense of comfort, and thankfully, I haven't run into any other creepy stalker guys again. When I was in high school, I had a close relationship with all of my friends. Now, I know that may seem like a common sense statement. I just feel like we were closer than a lot of friend groups. It was a group of eight of us, and we were together every weekend from 7th grade to 12th grade. When college came, we all went our separate ways for the most part, and even though we tried to stay in touch, after a few years, life just took over. We graduated 15 years ago now, and I had only seen a few of my friends from high school. Sure, we're all friends on social media, but it's just not the same. My one friend Brian was going back to our hometown to visit his mother and he decided to reach out to all of us several months ahead of time. He basically begged all of us to come home so we could have a night out together like we used to. It was tempting, but I wasn't sure that I could take the time off to go home for one night. When it was about a month away from his coming home, I noticed that all my friends had said yes that they would come back and I was the only holdout. My friends started to beg me and I finally caved in and said that I would join them, and my life was starting to feel a little bit like the beginning of the movie It too, when all the friends were going back to their hometown. Now I was just hoping that there weren't any demon clowns when I got there. Before I knew it, I was on my way home. I stopped and saw my parents and spent the afternoon with them. I brought my wife with me, which I was about to find out was a major problem. We all met at a local dive bar in the area. Some friends hadn't seen me or my wife since my wedding, and some of them hadn't even met her at all yet. After we all exchanged pleasantries, Brian pulled me aside and walked us away from the group. He was annoyed and gave me a hard time for bringing my wife. He claimed that this was about a friend group reconnecting, and that my wife was going to ruin it. I was angry, and I didn't like the way he was talking to me. I'm a pretty nice guy and I brushed it off and I assured him that she's cool and there's really nothing to worry about and I think he should be more respectful. He just groaned and he said that he would deal with it anyway. The night continued and it was a great time. We were laughing and joking all night and whenever I see these guys it's not like a second has passed. My wife couldn't believe how long it had been since we all talked as we really didn't miss a beat. We visited all the local bars in the area and just continued keeping the night going. Finally, Brian said that he had one more bar to show us. We were all intrigued but pretty tired, and we drove to a beautiful home and were confused about where Brian was leading us. When we got out of the car, Brian held out his arms and said, Surprise! But nobody really knew how to react. We didn't know what we were being surprised with. Brian then explained that he had bought this house and that he was moving back to town. We all congratulated him, and he invited us in for one last drink, and when we got inside, he had a cake for the friend group and an entire spread of food prepared for us. It was a super nice gesture, just a little late in the evening for all of this. We had been drinking and partying for several hours by this point, and we all stayed for a few drinks and continued to party at Brian's new house, When we were getting ready to leave, Brian says, Well, you you guys can't leave yet. Just stay here. I appeared grateful and thanked Brian for the offer, but I told my parents that I would go home to sleep. Brian insisted, and it ended up getting really awkward. And loudly in front of everyone, he says, It's because of her, isn't it? I told you that she would ruin everything. And we were speechless, and the rest of my friends were in shock. Everyone kind of threw their hands up and said, whoa, which was the only response you could really have unless you were me, and in that instance, I wanted to hit him, but I didn't. 
I swallowed my pride and said my goodbyes to everyone, even Brian, who didn't even apologize for what he said. My wife was a little upset that I didn't stick up for her more, and I totally understand that, but I just wanted to end the night on a positive note and leave before more damage was done. We got back to my parents' house a little after two in the morning. We both got ready for bed and crashed right away. Not long after falling asleep, my wife woke up. She said that she had heard something outside. I kept telling her that it was probably some animal since my parents' house was surrounded by woods. Then I started to hear it too, and it sounded a little strange for an animal. The room that we were sleeping in had a bed against the window, and it sounded like something was brushing against it. Our hearts were racing. I whipped back the curtain, and nothing was there. I cut my hands on the window and saw nothing but just some dark backyard. I told myself and my wife that it must have been an animal and that we'd probably just go back to sleep. Not two minutes later, we heard another strange noise, but this time it came from the kitchen. My wife was in a panic, but I told her that it was probably my parents just waking up early or something. She begged me to go check, and so I did. I wasn't sneaking or scared at this point because I was sure that it was probably just my mom or dad. As I walked down the hall, I walked by my parents' bedroom and I saw something that instantly freaked me out. Both of my parents were still in bed, sleeping, but I could clearly hear someone downstairs. I turned around and my wife was in the doorway of our bedroom. I mouthed to call 911 just because I didn't want to risk it, better safe than sorry. She closed the door and I heard her lock it. I went downstairs slowly and just sitting at the kitchen table was Brian. I approached him aggressively, demanding to know what he was doing. He didn't move. He just sat there at the table, not making a sound. I was whispering, trying not to wake my parents, but I was whispering in a pretty loud and angry tone, and I told him that the police were coming, and then he finally reacted. He lifts his head slowly to look at me, but didn't say anything. I don't know why, but I was unnerved by all of this. He slowly got up and just stared at me. I had known Brian for a long time, and this was a very weird behavior for him. This entire reaction was probably less than a minute, but it felt like it dragged on forever. Brian moved in closer, and without notice, he pushes me, taking me to the ground. You see, Brian's a pretty big guy, and I couldn't get him off me in that moment. He just sits on top of me and starts just throwing down punches. I put my hands up to defend myself, but there was only so much I could do. He was claiming that I ruined everything, and because of me, our friends will never come back home. Thankfully, the police arrived not long after this altercation. My dad ended up coming downstairs before the cops came inside, and he hit Brian with one of his golf clubs. The police then swiftly arrested him and took him out of the house. Thankfully, I didn't have any serious injuries, but my face did have one or two bruises on it. And this night was just insane. But the craziest part is that nobody really knows why Brian snapped. He didn't have any history of mental illnesses, drug use, or anything that would indicate this erratic behavior. And he always was one of the best humans that I knew, and to see him lose it like that, it just still breaks my heart. Nobody's gone home since that night, and everybody's kind of lost communication with Brian. He's deleted all of his social media accounts, and as far as we know, he could be getting professional help somewhere. And Brian, if you somehow hear this, I'm sorry if I did anything to hurt you, and I just hope that you find the peace that you need. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. EST, and there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash Let's Read Official, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.